Nearly four years ago, I, Suggestive Gaming, took a trip down memory lane and summarized the story of the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare trilogy. With the series' 15th anniversary, as well as a sequel to its 2019 reboot right around the corner, I figured what better time than now to look back once again. Over the years, this series has evolved, and I've learned a lot about covering these classic franchises. So let this video serve as not only an update to my original video, including better looking footage from the remastered campaigns, but also a more definitive recounting of the story, in which I'll be covering a few things that I missed in my first go around, as well as going a bit more in depth and fixing up some errors. And yes, that includes some flubbed mispronunciations. Additionally, as a bonus, I'll cover the events of Call of Duty Infinite Warfare as well, as that game includes references that could potentially place it in the same timeline, and it was also highly suggested in the original video's comments. Do note that I will not be covering the events of the 2019 reboot, as it takes place in a completely new universe. However, I did already make a standalone video covering the story of that game, so go check it out, link on screen now or in the description, to get caught up for where this year's Modern Warfare 2 will pick up. Now, without further ado, this is what you need to know about the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare Saga. Our story begins in the year 2011, where a group of ultranationalists in Russia are engaging in a civil war with the government. In order to distract the United States from intervening, one ultranationalist, Imran Zakayev, secretly funds a coup d'etat in the Middle East to catch their attention, organized by his ally, military commander Khalid al-Assad. Meanwhile, Sergeant John Soap McTavish is run through close quarters battle training by British Army Special Air Service, or SAS, Captain John Price. Price is impressed by Soap's performance, and he joins the Bravo team under Price's command. Soap, along with other Bravo team members, Lieutenant Gaz and Captain John Price, are then sent to the Bering Strait to intercept a cargo ship to search for a suspected nuclear package. After infiltrating the freighter's cargo hold, the team finds a nuclear warhead covered in Arabic writing. They are then ambushed and attacked by enemy fighters, but are able to narrowly escape before the ship sinks. Examining the ship's manifest, they find it pointing to Al-Assad as the purchaser of the package containing the warhead. Shortly after, the president of a Middle Eastern country, Yasser al-Fulani, is captured and brought before Al-Assad and Zakayev. Zakayev hands Al-Assad a Desert Eagle handgun, and he proceeds to use it to assassinate al-Fulani, all in front of a broadcasting television camera. Hours later, U.S. Marine Corps Sergeant Zach Parker is informed by his captain that Al-Assad's opposing force, or Op 4, is advancing on their position. Parker prepares by running through training, but afterwards his base is attacked by Op 4. While several Marines are killed in the ambush, Parker and the other survivors reach a rendezvous point and are extracted by helicopter. Meanwhile, the British SAS learns of possible nuclear devices on another cargo ship in the Caspian Sea. They infiltrate and search the ship, finding it overrun with ultranationalist forces. After fighting through, they find the ship's manifest before locating the nuke, but they are unfortunately unable to secure it before it is airlifted out of the ship's hold by a Russian aircraft. Afterwards, Soap, Gaz, and Price, along with Russian loyalists led by the team's old friend Sergeant Kamarov, set off to the Caucasus Mountains to rescue the Russian informant who supplied them with the information about the cargo ship, named Nikolai. Meanwhile, Al-Fulani's death has caused the U.S. Marine Corps, or USMC, to send in their first force recon team to the Middle East in search of Al-Assad. Believing him to be broadcasting live from a television station, they invade and clear out the building, but find no sign of him, learning that his broadcast was merely a recording meant to throw them off his trail. Elsewhere, Bravo team have successfully found and rescued their Russian informant, Nikolai, but while escaping, their helicopter is shot down. Fleeing on foot, they are able to make their way to a second escape helicopter thanks to friendly air support. Back in the Middle East, the First Force Recon Team recover a tank, codenamed War Pig, and head to the capital city where they believe al-Assad has fled to. There, they are informed of a nuclear warhead in the area. As they prepare to evacuate, however, their escort is shot down. They go back to rescue her, but unfortunately aren't able to escape in time. As their helicopter lifts off, 
the nuclear bomb is detonated, killing the team along with all of the other servicemen in the area. One member of the team, named Griggs, survives the event as he was separated from the team at the time of the blast. Meanwhile, Zack Parker's team examined the ship manifest they recovered and determined the location of the Bagman supplying funding to Al-Assad's militia. They then assault the Bagman's compound and are able to apprehend him. As they try to leave the area, however, the helicopter holding the Bagman is shot down. A rescue team is then sent in, securing the area, rescuing the pilots, and retrieving the Bagman, who they proceed to interrogate. Nikolai, the Russian informant, then tells Price about Al-Assad's safe house in Azerbaijan. The SAS infiltrate and find Al-Assad where he's hiding before capturing him. Price proceeds to interrogate him, but Al-Assad refuses to reveal who supplied the nuclear device. Suddenly, the captured commander's phone rings, and Price answers it to hear Imran Zakayev on the other end. With this knowledge gained and his usefulness gone, Price then executes Al-Assad. Price proceeds to tell his team about his history with Zakayev. As it turns out, 15 years prior, Price was assigned to assassinate Zakayev on a mission with his commanding officer, Captain McMillan. However, when attempting to kill Zakayev from a distance with a sniper rifle, Price's shot missed his mark, only managing to sever Zakayev's arm. Expecting him to die of blood loss, Price and his captain evacuated, but not before McMillan injured his leg, which prevented him from walking and forced Price to carry him out to safety. After interrogating the captured Bagman, the SAS learn of a Russian ultranationalist named Ivan Petrovich, who had been supporting Al-Assad's efforts. A team then infiltrates his compound, fighting their way through Petrovich's guards to find and capture him. After some interrogation, Petrovich reveals the location of an ultranationalist base of operations in the Caucasus. The SAS then launch a mission to infiltrate the base, where they find various documents pointing to the location of the nuclear warhead that was airlifted from the cargo ship in the Caspian Sea. Another squad is then sent to the location, where they locate and successfully disarm the nuclear device. Afterward, a joint mission between the SAS, USMC, and the Russian loyalists is conducted to try to capture Zakayev's son, Viktor, in order to gain intel to lead them to his father. During the mission, Victor is located and eventually cornered on top of a building. Just before Soap can restrain him, however, Victor shoots himself in the head to avoid capture. Angered by the death of his son, Zakayev threatens to launch a nuclear attack if the United States and British forces don't immediately leave Russia. To stop this, Price leads a joint British-American operation to retake Zakayev's nuclear launch facility. After invading the facility, however, the team sees two nuclear missiles launch en route to the United States, with the potential of killing over 40 million civilians. The group then rush to reach the control center, where SOAP is able to use abort codes provided by command to destroy the missiles in flight and prevent the attack. Meanwhile, Zack Parker and his team learn of another strategic missile strike that was planned at another facility, and they storm it, fighting through the ultranationalist forces. Much like the events at the other facility, a nuclear warhead is launched, forcing Zack to race to the control room to input the abort codes to disable the missile in air. Afterwards, the team secures another nuclear warhead before it can fall into the wrong hands, before escaping the facility. After fighting off swarms of hostile forces, the SAS team are able to hold out until a helicopter arrives to end the mission and take them to safety. Back at the other nuclear launch facility, Zakayev escapes, and Soap's team reach a vehicle depot, making their escape using Russian trucks. Followed by enemy vehicles, the team race down a Russian motorway, where an oil tanker explodes, leaving everyone except Griggs incapacitated. Griggs drags Soap to safety, but is shot by Zakayev's guards in the process, killing him. Zakayev then arrives and kills Gaz, before Price is able to throw Soap his gun. Soap then takes aim and shoots Zakayev and his guards, finally killing the ultranationalist leader. Kamarov and the Russian loyalists then arrive shortly after, and they proceed to take Soap and Price back to safety. The media then arrives, and Russian officials cover up the entire incident stating that it was merely a series of nuclear tests. 
At some later point, a special forces group, including resources from the various branches and agencies of the military forces of the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, and Australia, is formed. This group is then given the name Task Force 141. Sometime later, a terrorist group takes over a school in the Ukraine and takes the children there hostage. A Task Force 141 operative wearing a unique balaclava with a skull painted on it is sent in and is subsequently captured. To distract the terrorists from killing any hostages and allow his reinforcements to move in, the operative begins to tell the tale of a British SAS lieutenant named Simon Riley. His story tells of Riley's fight to take down Mexican drug cartel leader Manuel El Gordo Roba. During Riley's mission to assassinate Roba during a Day of the Dead celebration, his squad's commanding officer, Major Vernon, double-crossed them, having previously been captured and brainwashed by Roba. Riley and his squad mates were then captured and imprisoned by the cartel, where they were tortured mercilessly as part of Roba's brainwashing tactics. One day, however, Riley's squad mates, Sparks and Washington, were able to escape the stronghold, leaving him behind. Roba then forced Riley to kill Vernon before burying him alive in a casket alongside the dead Major's corpse. Riley was able to snap out of his tortured mindset, luckily, and spent the next 13 hours clawing himself out of his early grave. He was then later able to cross the border into Texas, where he was rescued and returned home. Riley soon found out, however, that Roba's influence remained, as he continuously had nightmares of the man. One day, Riley was visited by Sparks in Washington, but after Riley stopped Sparks from assaulting a woman, he revealed that his and Washington's own brainwashing was successful. The pair then attacked Riley, forcing him to escape from them. They then proceeded to kill Riley's entire family, setting him up for the murders. Feeling like a dead man walking, Riley then painted his face like a skull and snuck into the military barracks where Sparks and Washington were stationed, and killed Washington before capturing Sparks and taking him to the home where he killed Riley's family. He then killed Sparks, burning down the home to lead investigators to believe Sparks' body was his own, leaving him officially dead. Riley then went after Roba once again, torturing his men to learn of the cartel leader's location. He then single-handedly invaded Roba's fortress and found the man, shooting him in the head to finally get his vengeance. After wrapping up this story in the school, the operative in the skull mask gives a signal, and the SAS burst in, taking out the terrorists and rescuing the children. It is then revealed that this Task Force 141 operative is none other than Simon Riley himself, who was recruited into the group by its very impressed commander, General Shepard, before taking on the appropriate codename, Ghost. By 2013, the ultranationalists have successfully seized control of Russia, and Zakayev has since become seen as a martyr by the group. Their new leader has also started staging various terrorist attacks against Europe. Task Force 141 then executes a mission, Operation Kingfish, to find and capture this new leader codenamed Kingfish. Bravo Team, led by Price, infiltrates Kingfish's compound, but finds no sign of him. Instead, they only discover that he's personally targeting the group, before they spot a bomb planted as a trap. They're able to escape, but as they're extracted by helicopter, Price is forced to stay behind to provide cover fire to ensure their safe exit. As they leave, he is struck by enemy fire and is captured by the ultranationalist forces. After returning from the mission, Soap is debriefed by General Shepard. Soap demands to know the identity of Kingfish, and he is revealed to be one of Imran Zakayev's former lieutenants, a man named Vladimir Makarov. Sometime later, Task Force 141 sends a team to rescue a hostage VIP from an airplane mid-flight. This mission proves to be a success, as the hostiles are incapacitated, the hostage is rescued, and the team jump out safely before a bomb explodes, destroying the aircraft. At some point in the year 2016, a Middle Eastern country is attacked by the ultranationalists, forcing its leader, Prince Farhad, to flee. 
Farhad holds the United Nations responsible for refusing to provide his country aid, and he looks to purchase a nuclear device to gain swift vengeance on his attackers as well as the UN. With intelligence agencies determining Farhad may have found a source in South America, SAS Sergeant Patrick O'Neill and his Gopher Squad are tasked with tracking down an arms dealer named Colonel Ayala for questioning. When they reach the colonel's location, however, they find the man killed by Farhad's army. O'Neill then searches his computer to find information about the weapons factory where the nuke was assembled, which they then proceed to infiltrate and destroy. The SAS spend the next few days trying to locate the nuclear device, but are continuously unsuccessful in their attempts. One of their informants, Al Bak, then learns of the rogue nuke's location, but he is later compromised. O'Neill and his squad are able to find and extract Al Bak, eventually tracking down the rogue nuke to an oil refinery on the Russian border. Gopher Squad then infiltrates the facility and finds the nuke, however, it is already armed. O'Neill then carefully disarms the nuke, foiling Farhad's plan and protecting Russia. Prince Farhad is able to survive and escape, while the rest of the world governments are left to consider how to retaliate for his actions. In August of 2016, U.S. Army Ranger Joseph Allen works with his sergeant, Foley, on a mission in Afghanistan. After an impressive performance, Allen is hand-selected by General Shepard to be reassigned to the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency, where his new mission is to go deep undercover and join Makarov's ranks. Meanwhile, the SAS sends Task Force 141 members, Soap McTavish and Sergeant Gary Roach Sanderson, to recover an attack characterization system module from a downed satellite at a Russian airbase. During the mission, however, the two are discovered and attacked by enemy forces. The pair are able to fight through the enemy forces, finding snowmobiles which they use to escape with the module. Later, Allen, having joined Makarov's ranks, participates in a massacre of civilians in a Moscow airport. Makarov instructs his crew to speak English and use NATO weapons to falsify a narrative to the Russians that this was an attack on them by Americans. As they escape, Makarov kills Allen, revealing that he had known the CIA operative's true identity all along. Makarov and his men then leave Allen's body behind, where it is identified as American. Shortly after, Task Force 141 learns of an arms dealer named Alejandro Rojas, who has ties to Makarov. Hoping to use him to get to the ultranationalist leader, Roach, Soap, and Ghost chase him down and capture him, taking Rojas into their custody. In retaliation to the perceived United States attack on the Moscow airport, Russia launches a surprise attack on the United States, revealing that the ACS module Soap and Roach retrieved was compromised since its recovery. This invasion eventually proves to be the catalyst for World War III. Army Rangers Sergeant Foley, Corporal Dunn, and Private James Ramirez, Allen's replacement, are then sent to defend Washington, D.C. Meanwhile, Task Force 141 learns from Rojas that the Russians are holding one of Makarov's most hated enemies in a gulag, whom they codename Prisoner 627. The group are left stranded due to air support being cut by the invasion in the US, but they are later rescued by Soap, with help from the Russian informant he had previously helped rescue, Nikolai. General Shepard, convinced that breaking out Prisoner 627 will draw out Makarov, sends Task Force 141 to the Gulag holding the prisoner to break him out. Once they infiltrate the Gulag and fight through its security forces, they find that this prisoner is none other than Captain Price. After a short reunion, Task Force 141 escapes with Price by helicopter as the Gulag is demolished below them. In D.C., Sergeant Foley and his team discover that the Air Force intends to carpet bomb the Capitol building, believing it to be lost to the attacking Russian forces. Meanwhile, Price agrees to immediately get back to work with Task Force 141. Believing that something extreme must be done to stop the attack in the United States, Price plans to infiltrate a Russian nuclear submarine base. While Shepard commands him to focus on finding Makarov, Price cuts his communication and leads Task Force 141 to the submarine base instead. There, Price, acting alone, hijacks a sub and launches a nuclear intercontinental ballistic missile towards the east coast of the United States. While the ICBM is in the air, 
The United States Secretary of Defense authorizes General Shepard to do everything necessary to take down Makarov, providing a blank check for whatever he needs. As the ICBM is in the atmosphere above Washington, D.C., Price has it detonated, sparing Washington from the attack, but destroying the International Space Station. This blast also creates an electromagnetic pulse, disabling all electronic equipment in the area, effectively stopping both the United States and Russian militaries in their tracks. This distraction allows Sergeant Foley and his rangers to retake the White House and set off emergency flares on the roof just as the fighters arrive, indicating that the city is in fact not lost and calling off the airstrike. The next day, Task Force 141 is informed of two possible locations Makarov might be hiding, leading the team to split up to search both. Soap and Price go to an aircraft scrapyard in Afghanistan, while Roach and Ghost head to a safe house in the Caucasus Mountains. The safe house turns out to be a trap, however, but Roach and Ghost are able to fight their way through and obtain vital intelligence containing Makarov's entire plan. General Shepard arrives to retrieve the intelligence before shockingly killing both Roach and Ghost, betraying Task Force 141 for various personal reasons. Among these reasons are potentially tying up loose ends by eliminating anyone who knew of his connection to Joseph Allen and the massacre at the Moscow airport, or to stop them after feeling Price was too dangerous after the EMP stunt, or even to go down in history as the war hero that inspired the world to finally act and end World War III. Regardless, Shepard then has Ghost and Roach's bodies burned as he has his shadow company ambush Price and Soap at the scrapyard. Price and Soap hold out at the scrapyard while they await Nikolai's arrival for extraction. Caught in the middle of a firefight between Shepard and Makarov's men, Price makes another Hail Mary and contacts Makarov via radio, revealing that Shepard now has his entire playbook. Knowing that the enemy of his enemy can at least be a temporary asset, Makarov reveals Shepard's location to Price before going into hiding. Soap and Price are able to reach Nikolai's aircraft and safely escape the scrapyard before planning out their next move in air. With the pair now declared war criminals by Shepard, Soap and Price decide to take vengeance on their former general, agreeing on one final suicide mission on his base in Afghanistan. They arrive at the base and fight his Shadow Company soldiers through several systems of caves before finding Shepard himself. The man attempts to escape in a boat, forcing Soap and Price to give chase down a river. When Shepard boards an aircraft to escape, Price is able to shoot it down just before the two fall down a waterfall. Washing up on land, a wounded Soap attempts to chase Shepard, but he is quickly overpowered and stabbed in the chest. Just as Shepard is about to shoot Soap, Price tackles him and the two fight hand to hand. Soap, unable to reach a weapon, slowly pulls the knife out of his own chest before throwing it at Shepard, impaling him in the eye, piercing his brain, and killing him instantly. Shortly after, Nikolai arrives and helps Price carry the injured Soap to his helicopter. Price warns Nikolai that by killing a U.S. Army general, the two are now international fugitives, but Nikolai tells him he knows of a safe place they can go to lay low. Later, Nikolai arrives with Soap and Price at a safe house in India run by his loyalist Russian allies. They begin to give an unconscious Soap medical attention, but shortly thereafter, Makarov's forces invade and storm the safe house. Nikolai and his best soldier, an ex-Spetsnaz agent named Yuri, then help Price escape, while protecting Soap to keep him alive. After the group are able to reach safety, they proceed to go into hiding. Meanwhile, World War III rages on, with Russia attacking British and American forces in Alaska. Luckily, the joint group are able to hold off the attacking forces, protecting vital intel as well as the Alaskan oil pipelines. On the border of Arizona and Nevada, Russian forces also begin to move towards the Hoover Dam. The Allied forces hold them off to protect it, but ultimately fail to disarm their bombs, leading to the dam's destruction. At the port of Baltimore, Maryland, the Allied forces learn of a weapon of mass destruction being brought in by the Russian attackers. The U.S. National Guard reaches the cargo ship carrying the weapon just in time to witness a Russian helicopter lifting it away. Luckily, one of them is able to fire an RPG directly at the helicopter, 
bringing it and the WMD down to sink into the Atlantic Ocean. The team is then sent to the location of Russia's final attack, New York City. In New York City, a U.S. Army Delta team designated Team Metal, including Staff Sergeant Derek Frost Westbrook and Master Sergeant Sandman, holds off Russian forces at the Stock Exchange on Wall Street. Afterwards, they hijack a Russian submarine, using it against its own fleet to drive the Russian army out of the New York Harbor. Over the next two months, Price, Nikolai, and Yuri relocate the still-recovering soap to a new safe house in Africa until he is able to rejoin the fight. In October, the Russian president, Boris Vorshevsky, announces a summit in Hamburg to negotiate peace with the United States and NATO. This is foiled by Makarov, however, whose men hijack the president's plane on the way. After bringing the plane down, Makarov kidnaps the president, planning to abduct and torture his daughter in order to force him to hand over the launch codes for Russia's nuclear arsenal. Meanwhile, Soap has recovered enough to rejoin the fight, and he, Price, and Yuri trace Makarov's actions to an arms deal in Sierra Leone. They attempt to steal the cargo from the deal, but are unable to locate it, and it instead gets distributed across Europe to Paris, Berlin, and London. When the French intercept a message about a suspicious shipment en route to London, they inform the SAS who send in a team to investigate. They find the truck supposedly containing chemical weapons, but soon find it to simply be a decoy. Elsewhere in London, the real bomb detonates. At the same time, others detonate all across Western Europe, unleashing deadly chemical gas and killing tens of thousands of civilians. The Russian army uses these attacks as openings to invade the various European countries, leading Team Metal to be deployed to Hamburg to rescue the US Vice President a mission that is ultimately successful. Price then calls his former mentor, Captain McMillan of the SAS, for intel about Makarov and the bombings. As a favor to repay Price for his actions decades prior, McMillan gives him intel about the origin of the delivery freighter carrying the explosives being traced to a warlord in Somalia named Warabi. Price, Soap, and Yuri storm Warabi's stronghold and find him. Through interrogation, they learn that Warabe made contact through a bomb maker named Volk in Paris. After Price kills Warabe, the team heads to meet with Nikolai at a nearby extraction point. Nikolai's helicopter is soon shot down, however, forcing them to rescue him before escaping on foot through the cover of a sandstorm. Although he's still a wanted man, Price contacts Sandman to give him the intel acquired from Warabe. This leads Team Metal to Paris, where they attempt to track down Volk. The team find him, and after a daring chase, they are able to capture the bomb maker, escaping Paris as the Eiffel Tower falls from a Russian bombing run. After his capture, Volk reveals everything he knows, including information about a meeting Makarov is about to have with his top advisors that evening in the Hotel Lustig in Prague. Sandman passes this information back to Price, who heads to Prague with his team. There, they are reunited with Kamarov, who is currently leading a local resistance. They all set off to assassinate Makarov, but they fail, as Kamarov is captured and strapped with explosives. Price just barely escapes as the bombs are detonated, killing Kamarov. Makarov then refers to Yuri as his friend over radio communications before another bomb goes off at the building he and Soap are currently atop of as a vantage point. While Soap pushes Yuri away from the blast, the fall knocks both of them to the ground, with debris falling on Soap and injuring him once again. Yuri and Price are able to carry Soap to a resistance safe house, but while there, Soap uses his final moments to reveal to Price that Makarov knows Yuri. John Soap McTavish then dies from his injuries. Price leaves Soap's body, taking his journal and dog tags, before confronting Yuri at gunpoint, demanding him to explain his connection with Makarov. Yuri then reveals that he was a former ultranationalist and close associate of Makarov's. He was even alongside Makarov during Price's attempted assassination of Zakayev, as well as the detonation of the nuclear bomb in the Middle East that killed Shepard's men. 
Yuri was also supposed to participate in the airport massacre years later, but the horrific nature of the plan caused him to turn on Makarov and inform the authorities. Makarov learned of this betrayal and shot Yuri in the parking garage of the airport, leaving him for dead before conducting the event anyway. While dying, Yuri tried to grab a dead security officer's pistol to stop Makarov, but was unable to due to his gunshot wound causing him to pass out. He was later saved by a medic who was unaware of his connection to the event. Price is reluctant to trust Yuri, but concludes that the two are fighting for the same goal. Macmillan then leads them to a castle near Prague that they believe might be Makarov's base of operations. Price and Yuri invade the stronghold, discovering that Vorshevsky, the Russian president, is currently being held in another location alongside Makarov. They then learn that the ultranationalists have located his daughter in Berlin. Price and Yuri then escape Makarov's fortress before passing the information along to Team Metal. They send in a team to rescue Vorshevsky's daughter in Berlin, but arrive too late, and they can only watch as a helicopter takes her away. Having one last chance to rescue the president and prevent Makarov from obtaining the launch codes, Team Metal works directly with Price and Yuri to rescue the Vorshevskys from a diamond mine in Siberia. They are able to find and rescue both VIPs, but as they go to escape in an arriving helicopter, Sandman and Team Metal stay behind to distract the hostiles, giving their lives to ensure President Vershevsky's safety. Their sacrifice proves to be for the greater good, as Vershevsky is able to join the peace summit and bring an end to the conflict between Russia and the United States, effectively stopping World War III. Makarov, however, remains at large, and Task Force 141 is cleared of their charges and reinstated to track him down. Three months later, in January of 2017, they finally do determining Makarov's location to be the Hotel Oasis in the Arabian Peninsula. Price and Yuri invade the hotel, fighting through the numerous forces to reach the top, where Nikolai sees Makarov escaping to his helicopter. Another hostile helicopter then shoots the hotel, causing the roof to collapse. After regaining his footing, Price finds Yuri pinned down and impaled through the abdomen by a piece of debris. Price rushes to him, and Yuri tells him to leave him behind so as not to let Makarov get away. Price heeds this advice and runs to catch up to Makarov. Price then sees Makarov board his helicopter, but he's able to jump onto it and kill the two pilots. This causes the chopper to crash back down onto the roof. Makarov and Price then climb out of the wreckage and both race to a desert eagle they see lying on the rooftop. Makarov gets to it first and holds the gun to Price's head. Before he can pull the trigger, however, Yuri arrives and shoots Makarov in the shoulder. Taken by surprise, Makarov turns around and returns fire, hitting Yuri and finally killing him. Price takes advantage of his friend's final distraction, however, and tackles Makarov. In the following scrap, Price is able to wrap a steel cable around Makarov's throat before breaking through the glass ceiling beneath them, causing both of them to fall down into the hotel, but leaving Makarov dangling by the cable on his throat suffocating, and finally killing him. Price then sits up and gazes upon Makarov's hanging, lifeless body. He silently takes out a cigar and lights it, just as sirens are heard as the police finally begin to arrive at the scene. This is the last we see of Captain John Price, with his vengeance fulfilled, but his future left unknown. While this brings us to the end of the original Modern Warfare saga, as mentioned in the intro, we've got one more bonus game to go over, so let us jump several years into the future as we dive into our final story of this video. This story begins in the future, where the Settlement Defense Front, or SDF, breaks away from Earth and builds an army to gain absolute power in the galaxy. The United Nations Space Alliance, or UNSA, learns of an SDF attack on one of their facilities on Europa, which is housing a powerful prototype weapon. The UNSA sends in a team to recover the weapon, but they ultimately fail, being executed by one of the SDF's top commanders, Admiral Salen Koch. The recording of this attack is then reviewed on Earth, in Geneva, by Lieutenant Nick Reyes and Admiral Frederick Reigns. 
Reyes is angered by the SDF's act of aggression, but Reigns urges him to calm down and use diplomacy as the rules of engagement prohibit their direct response. Knowing that the SDF are simply waiting for a reason to trigger an all-out war, and considering the UNSA is currently gathered in Geneva for Fleet Week celebrations, Rain sees no reason to escalate matters at this moment. Reyes exits Rain's office to meet with his partner Nora Salter, who he tells about what he's learned. After observing the Fleet Week parade, the pair are introduced to their new robotic squadmate, Petty Officer First Class E3N informally known as Ethan. They board a transport ship with Admiral Reigns, but in air, they witness Earth's ATIS defense cannons suddenly turn on the UNSA fleet, opening fire and taking down the majority of the ships in air. Reyes is forced to make a crash landing before witnessing invading SDF forces, who begin killing the citizens of Earth indiscriminately. The group fights through the SDF attackers to reach the ATIS control system, where they are able to shut down the cannons and apprehend SDF commander Akil Min Rhea, who had been working as an SDF sleeper agent. Reyes, Salter, and Ethan then take the battle into orbit, where they fight off the SDF fleet, eventually causing them, as well as their flagship, the Olympus Mons, to retreat. Afterwards, the team boards one of the two remaining UNSA ships, the Retribution. There, they find multiple casualties from the battle, including the Retribution's captain and executive officer. Reyes then takes command of the ship as its new captain, immediately taking charge and assessing the situation. Admiral Reigns then calls them and informs them of a simultaneous attack on the moon, tasking Reyes, who he promotes to the rank of commander, with retaking its cargo port. After a successful mission on the moon, Reyes and his crew continue to fight to weaken the SDF and buy the UNSA time to rebuild their fleet. Soon, Reyes gets a call from Admiral Reigns, who reveals that Rhea was holding a transmitter which would alert the SDF fleet to invade Earth on its destruction. Shortly after, the destroyer ship, the Tigris, is destroyed after an SDF ambush, leaving the Retribution the last operational UNSA craft. With the stakes ever rising, Reyes decides to destroy Rhea's transmitter to draw the Olympus Mons to Geneva, where they'll prepare an ambush with the Aedis cannons to take it out. During Rhea's transport, however, SDF forces break him free. Reyes follows him and tries to recapture him, but the prisoner gains the upper hand, permanently disabling the Aedis cannons before cutting the transmitter out of his own body and destroying it before dying from his wounds. This triggers the arrival of the SDF forces, and the Olympus Mons fires on the UNSA headquarters, decimating it and killing Admiral Reigns inside. Now fueled by vengeance, Reyes and his team forcefully board the Olympus Mons and fight their way through the SDF forces to reach its bridge. There, Reyes finally kills Admiral Koch, allowing him to seize control of the Olympus Mons. With the massive ship now at his disposal, Reyes launches a mission to take it and the Retribution to Mars, which the SDF's shipyard is orbiting. While both ships are able to take out a fair amount of the SDF's ships in orbit, they are unable to destroy the shipyard. After sustaining too much damage, both the Olympus Mons and the Retribution are forced to crash land on the surface of Mars. Many of the UNSA soldiers die in the crash, with those remaining making a final push to destroy the shipyard. After getting onto the station, the team finds an SDF ship, and Salter is able to steal it, taking Ethan but leaving Reyes behind. On board the ship, Ethan is forced to sacrifice himself to activate its weapons. Afterwards, Salter refuses to fire at the shipyard while Reyes is still there, but he commands her to take this opportunity. She fires the ship's cannons, jettisoning Reyes into space. As he drifts off, he watches the shipyard explode before a flying piece of shrapnel pierces his helmet, exposing him to the vacuum of space and killing him. Afterwards, the destruction of the SDF shipyard ensures the UNSA's victory over the SDF. One of the few survivors of the event, Salter, then pays tribute to Reyes and her other fallen comrades, saluting them before walking off. And with that, we reach the end of the original modern and infinite warfare sagas. Luckily, we get to continue fighting through a new Price and Soap stories with the Modern Warfare reboot series launched in 2019. 
with a brand new installment coming this year. Make sure you click over to my video covering the first game in that series with the link in the description or on screen. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This series and this video in particular require a lot of time, energy, and effort. And it's a lot of work for a single person with no team such as myself to get these videos out on a semi-consistent basis. As such, if you enjoy my content and would like to help support, much like the wonderful folks on screen now, I do have a Patreon or a channel membership option right here on YouTube where you can pledge just $5 to get early access as well as special credit on each video. I mean, come on, I played Call of Duty DS games for you people. That was a joke, but really do please consider supporting. Make sure you like this video, leave a comment suggesting what I cover next, and of course, subscribe with notifications on to see my new videos as soon as they come out. You can also follow me on Twitter to catch updates and chat with me, or join the Discord to hang out with the community. Links in the description. See you guys next time.